Hey everybody, this is TFNet. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a quick review of Series 1 of the McFarlane Toys Witcher 3 Wild Hunt figures. On the left we have the normal version of Geralt, and on the right we have Aridin. These have been reviewed by probably a good amount of people already. I'm very late to the punch here, but I am very busy with work as well as other figures coming in that I'm trying to find time to review. The newest series of Witcher 3 figures from McFarlane Toys are coming in soon. So I'm going to be reviewing that pretty soon, and I want to have this up before that. And I'm just giving my quick thoughts. Again, a lot of this has already been said by now. One of these figures is pretty much a reuse of a figure I already have a review for, which was the gold label one. So I'm just going over these quick. Overall thoughts, just really quick, are um, like with a lot of from Toys products, uh, problems. There's some problems with this line, but um, I can't help but like these figures. They are really, really well made. If you need some uh, pretty cheap, uh, relatively cheap McFarlane toys or just, I'm going to say Witcher 3 collectibles, these are some that I recommend. So I'm going to go over Geralt pretty quickly, and then I'm going to go over Aerith and run after Geralt. Okay, here is the normal Geralt. Before I get started, like with pretty much every figure from this lineup and pretty much every McFarlane toy figure, you get a Witcher 3 stand right there. Same thing with Aerith box i don't have that box right now unfortunately to show this figure when we zoom in a little bit get closer again this thing if you own the gold label uh gold label one that came out in like early 2021 like i do not much different but it's a good thing because that figure is great i like that figure a lot let me back out and you'll get to see what, exactly what i mean the sculpt is pretty much entirely the same the exact same outfit, but of course, different colors. We have more of, it's a post, I don't know, this is a definitely color-wise a light brown, not really a yellow. Um, like, I thought it was supposed to be based on certain shaders I saw, and, you know, um, dyes, I should say, from the game. But, again, it, it's, as soon as you load up the game, this is how your how Geralt's gonna look. And, not, again, not much different, so... Sculpt-wise, pretty similar. I'll go over the sculpting really quick, though, just because it looks really good. So, first thing I want to talk about is the face sculpt. It's the same exact one as the gold label one. I have no idea if it's going to be the same one with the, the wolf armor one that's coming out this month. But it's still really good. I do wish they would maybe change it up for future Geralt releases, maybe give them a different hairstyle. But the actual face, I don't want them to change because they already did such a great job already. With the scars and just the details overall. It looks like Geralt came out straight out of the game. Great colors so far throughout this whole figure. My problem, just is pretty much the previous one too. The soft plastic piece here, which kind of makes him look like he has a beard gut because of how deformed it can look. So I'm not a big fan of that. You, you might be able to fix that with some heat though. Lots of great other armor pieces around the shoulders and arms. Different colors. Actually, they might be the same colors when it comes to this part here, but mostly, you know, like dark browns versus light browns, and then like blue versus a very, very light brown. Medallion color and sculpt is the same on this, uh, you know, is a chest. These are also the exact same sculpt and paint when it comes to the swords and whatnot. So as you can see, the holsters here, or the, the swords, they're holstered, that's what I meant to say. But it's exposed just like the previous one. I don't think it's going to be for the new one. If I'm wrong, then I'll find out during the review when I get it this week. But these swords could have definitely better paint. It's just a light gray plastic. But I think the overall sculpt of both of these, the silver, the this one being the steel and this one being the silver, are awesome. Give me another quick look. He does have a hole in the back, which can be distracting. If you don't have his uh, sword holsters on, but I think it's fine for now. The rest of this is just really great. Uh, it actually has like different textures and whatnot going on. And the legs, you can see some silver in the knuckles. Like this hook, which is a soft plastic, which I have an accessory I'll show off in a second. Um, that may be for that, but not really. Uh, silver on the belt. Then we get down to the knee pads, whatnot, and the legs. That's And they have a little bit of some brown paint variation right there on the boots and on the shins now the way that the pegs for the feet are sculpted or you know the little ball joints i mean it's a little weird because it's just a smooth sculpt 
compared to actual details here. So that's one thing I have a problem with. And that's with a lot of other McFarlane Toys figures too. Not much detail on the bottom of the feet, but you're not going to be paying attention too much. Now, one thing that we got, which I did, I wish we got it with uh, the gold label one, but we have it with the retail one, is a werewolf's head. This is basically just a trophy here, which looks great. I love the details with some of the brown in the fur, some of that exposed, uh, those exposed wounds and you know flesh and whatnot. The eyes came out great. The tongue too. Just everything about the sculpting and paint and look on here. It's just a very basic red sculpt, but that's very nicely detailed. It could be better. It's not like, I don't think it's on the same quality as like NECA would do. They would probably go all out. But it still looks pretty good and pretty grotesque. There's some more fur right there. So some nice string, or uh, not string, of course, rope detailed on here. And we have this piece here, which is a, uh, you know, just a soft plastic with a loop. Now, this is not how you're really supposed to do it, which is a complaint I have. Uh, there is no proper way to hang it up if you're going to do it like this. Because that's not how low it's supposed to hang. It's basically, if there was like a hole in here, it would hang like that. And I try to figure out other ways to do it, but it's really not going to work out. Pretty much the only way you're going to be able to properly use this accessory is if he's holding it in one hand like so. Which isn't a problem for me. I think that's fine. Let me try to focus up here a little bit. Yeah, that could work. I just wish that this thing here had an actual use. It definitely didn't have much of a use when you didn't get any kind of, you know, head or anything with this figure, with that hook. Not much so. Still here with this guy. Overall, though, again, if you own the Gold Label one or if you already have owned this, you know how good it is. I'm just going over it really quick because it's the reused figure that we have. Let's talk about the sword here for Aridin. It is very nicely done. I like the handle with a nice paint. I mean, it could have a little bit of better like a paint wash or something on here. A little bit of a black wash, but it could be. It's, it's fine, seriously. And there's a little bit of some metallic paint going on on the pommel here, which is fine with me too. You see the rest of the detail in the sword, which has a little bit, kind of like a bronze or tarnished look to it, is very cool. I wish we got this kind of paint on Geralt's swords. I have no idea if we're going to get that in the new ones. I wish, hopefully, series swords as well. But man, the, act, the actual sculpting and detail on the blade is just really, really cool. No holstering, which I don't believe was a thing for Aridin in the game. But, of course, he can hold it. Both hands here have gripping hands. It's, you got to be a little bit careful with the plastic, but it should be able to pop in, move it, adjust it, whatever, and work it around. I'm trying to freaking figure it out. Not the greatest pose, of course, but yeah, you can do it with one-handed poses. No problem. Let's pop this bad boy out, which pops out easier than it goes in. Take a look at the actual figure now on the helmet here similar details with paint that we got with the sword man look at that nice like i don't know it's like a it's, i don't know if it's like a tarnishing type of paint that they're trying to i don't know what color i would describe it's different like a brownish or yellowish it looks great and the sculpting on him for this head sculpt looks fantastic and the hair too nice long and flowing with nice black details there we do have some nice soft spikes here so you're touching these a tiny bit sharp but it's not hard plastic that will break and pierce your skin these are very worrisome though these are also a softer a bit of a softer plastic and the sharpness is it's not really that sharp that's not an issue but i just feel like somehow these can get ripped and torn so just be aware of that be careful i would say we have this nice little I don't know, it's just some fabric, kind of looking like a cloak or something with some nice tears, a little bit of, I actually can't tell if there's some dirt painted in here, but the tears are really nicely done. You, the, my biggest complaint is just this like pinkish, like flesh color uh, type of plastic. It, the sculpt is good, but the paint, it's a little too flashy. I don't really remember how it looks too much in the video game, so I'm going to give it a pass, but I wish there was a little bit more actual paint details. Because I just feel like the paint in like a lot of areas here just looks a little too plain. What I do want to talk about is how cool these are. I don't know exactly what piece, article of clothing this is called back then. But we have really nice designs right there. 
Some of it's torn up too, and it looks really good. It's a soft plastic, so you have to worry about it hindering any articulation. Got some nice sashes and whatnot with some buckles. We even have some stuff here. I have no idea what's going on here, but these are extremely soft plastic to where if you pull on it, you will tear it, but it's not brittle. So if you're just leaving it as it is and it falls, it's not going to break. That's awesome. And then we have this piece here, which is also like the same fabric there. I didn't mention we do have some nice gauntlets, with, which I wish they would at least paint the ball joint here for the uh, hand a little bit so it looked good, but oh well. I have a little bit of some silver going on in the hand right there. And as well as that, like, pinkish-reddish paint in the hands. Same one here. So that's fine. It's also a black fabric going on here, which has... It actually is... It moves interdependently, I believe. We'll go over that in the articulation section when I get to it in a little bit. We get down to the knee pads looking really good with... Kind of like this bronze. Not really goldish. I got a little bit goldish details. I think there's actually a little bit of a black wash in there in the lines. So that's cool. And then we get down to shins, down to the feet too. These things are awesome. I dig the, how the feet came out with the details and whatnot. Great sculpting, great paint. A little bit of a black wash, I think, going on in the, that bronze, goldish, whatever. That's what the bottom of the feet look like too. So overall, like my only complaint really with this figure, when you stack it next to this guy here, which is about a normal... You know, McFarlane toy 7-inch scale figure. I think Aaron's supposed to be much taller, but that would be that would probably be pushing like 40 bucks. So I understand why it's a bit smaller. Um, I mean, either way, it's a great looking figure. Now, Geralt's articulation ball joint here, I believe there, there might be a... No, I think it's just a ball joint here. I thought there was articulation at the neck going into the body, but it's just a swivel here, the hair sculpt. Will prevent it from going back, but forward is fine. His head was posed like this in the box. So now there's just this collar here that's all warped, unfortunately. Keep that in mind. I think there might be a bit... Yes, there's a bit of a butterfly joint here. Not the greatest. Arms go all the way around, in and out. Upper arm swivel. We do have double joint elbows. McFarlane toys wrist articulation that swivels at two different areas and hinges like so. Soft diaphragm piece here that covers a joint, which I feel like it'll break almost every time. Forward, back, and kind of do side to side and rotate. So, you know, I, I get why they did it. I, I'm digging it a bit, but crunch it forward. Look at that. Sometimes it doesn't want to keep the pose either. Legs go forward that much. Back eh, in and out. And it will also warp some of the plastic too like that, unfortunately. But we do not really an upper thigh swivel. It is kind of sculpted in there, but there's too much in the sculpt that blocks it. Double joint knee. Swivel here at the foot hinge right there back's not great you do have rotation there and toe hinge now Aridin is a bit more hindered but i don't think the actually the hair sculpt is just as hindering if not more than Geralt's. back's not great forward is actually pretty fine that's what the back looks like side to side it is actually kind of poor but we do actually don't know if we get Butterfly joints, just because of how big these freaking joints are. But, arms go all the way around. We do have an upper arm swivel here. But, the, uh, it's just like this little black fabric piece here. This thing will swivel. It's a separate sculpted piece. So, see that? That's a swivel there. But, grab it. It swivels here at the arm as well. Single joint elbow, which is not the greatest bend. Wrist articulation like I showed off earlier. You can see that. What not. Now, we actually do have a sculpted piece for articulation. Swivel. This is also still a soft plastic, though. Forward like that, which actually doesn't look too bad when it comes to keeping the sculpt. So I did that a little bit more than Geralt's, honestly. Back is not the greatest, though. Side to side, a little bit of side to side like that. Legs so forward like that, which can warp the plastic a bit. Back. Actually, really good. Actually, the thigh swivel is a bit better. It's really the arm articulation on this figure that isn't the greatest. We do get a single joint knee, also the knee articulation, I forgot to mention. There is also a swivel here at the uh, calf, which I wish it was up a little higher. So that way it just didn't look weird when you're rotating the kneecap, you know. But we do have a swivel here, which is covered by a bit of a softer plastic piece. Forward, actually, the down is really good. 
Forward Axe is really good too, but you bend some of that plastic. Ankle Rocker. And a Toe Hinge as well. So, you know, give and take with some of the articulation for both of these figures. So, quick size comparisons with a Marvel Legends of Stars. The Black Series figure with those, both of these guys here, they're in the 7 inch scale. The other figures are in the 6 inch scale. So, of course, both of these are going to be taller than the 6 inch figures. I don't have much time to do uh, in-depth photos for these guys, unfortunately, like I really like to do a lot, but maybe in the future I'll post some on my Instagram if you want to see some over there. My overall thoughts with both of these are there are definitely more positives for me than negatives. I don't know if it's my bias for the game talking, but these things are, I think, really solid pieces. It definitely when it comes to sculpt in most areas, could be a few areas, mostly with like the softer plastic pieces. That isn't entirely great. Paint could be better on some parts of both figures, as well as mostly the accessories for Geralt when it comes to those swords. But I do like his trophy that he comes with. And it's if you own, again, the gold label version, or if you've already owned this figure, you know how good it is it, when it comes to the look. And I think it looks really good compared to how it looks in the video game. And Aridin is also really well done. Could have better paint, again, like I said, in certain areas, but overall very solid piece with could could have a little bit better articulation as well but both of these are just really nice figures for 20 to 25 bucks that you're gonna be getting and actually they're starting to be a little bit cheaper so if you're thinking about picking up these figures and now might be the best time depending on where you find it you could find these for as low as 10 bucks on some retailers so happy hunting there and the new series is coming out so i'll be trying to get those reviews pretty soon whenever they come in thank you guys very much for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already Comment down below what you think about the figures, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share with your friends. Sorry, again, I can do much with this review and rush through it a little bit. I'll try to do something a little bit more depth in the next time. I'll see you guys later.